Welcome back, everybody, to Minecraft Tech It Classic. My name, as always, is Maxwell. And I thought because a few of you have been asking to see the aftermath and the giant hole and the sort of behind the scenes of what went down on the uh, episode 110 finale, that I thought I'd make this quick video and just show you a little bit behind the curtain on exactly what went down. So, the idea was basically to destroy the shit out of everything to lead nicely onto the idea of um, of the sky block. We'd already had in mind that we wanted to do a sky block challenge, um, which is why we went for agrarian skies, just because it's an awesome, awesome mod pack. So the idea came about that we'd want to destroy everything, and that would nicely lead onto the idea that. Uh, the only thing to survive the cataclysm was the small little island of dirt. So exactly what happened. The original plan was... <sighs> Excuse me, I'm a little bit full of coal. The original plan was to actually have these uh, nuclear reactors explode. But um, we did a few tests. Sort of way off in the wilderness and realised that even this many nuclear reactors couldn't one explode big enough and two couldn't be set off reliably enough um we did sort of timing tests and we couldn't quite get the timing right on when we wanted the reactors to explode so as you can see these reactors are literally never ever going to overheat they've got four cooling cells per uranium cell and if uh, we get rid of the switch and you can see that these things are never going to overheat. They're only really using two cooling cells each. So, um, we had to come up with another solution. Now, this was a little bit of a point of contention. I was a bit annoyed that the uh, colouring system didn't work. But if we have a look behind here, got a whole system set up. Ah, so I can see why immediately why that's not working. So, I'm going to go into creative mode. And well, that wouldn't work either. Anyway, so this is what we've got set up behind here, which is, actually that's annoying me that that's, uh, that that's not working. I'm just going to quickly fix that. So this is how it all should have looked. Oops. I want that there and that there. Right, there we go. So the idea was that we've got these things here, which are timers. And they basically just count a number of ticks. And uh, we had I had chests set up here with all of the required components. So what we would do is just come here and place one of these things. And that would tick once every two seconds. So if you see we had that the count timer there of 150. So after 300 seconds, which is five minutes, that would be done. And that would turn that light there on. Uh, the next one was obviously 300, which was uh, 10 minutes. Now, I was a little bit a little bit surprised at this one because, uh, obviously, well, we'll just we'll get rid of that. Whoops. Uh, what's supposed to... Well, and you see that light comes on. Um, I was surprised that the alarm went off, but the light didn't go on because I did extensively test this. And in the testing, the light came on and... The, uh, ah, I see what's happened. So the I'll turn that off. So the wire's been cut there and connected to the howler alarm, and that means it's no longer connected to the light. Well, anyway, so that's one mystery solved. Um, that's the alarm. Obviously, after ten minutes, that count would go up, and then we had a final count here, which was four hundred and fifty. Which was again another five minutes on top of all of the others. When this one went off, it would not only set the red light off, but it would set a signal off along this pink wire here. And if we just go ahead and follow the pink wire, we can find where this goes and exactly what it does. I'll we'll just have to smash a little bit of the terrain. So as you can see here, this leads out into the tube to get up and down. So you may have noticed this pink wire during the episode. Where it leads, though, is around here. And it leads to this. Now, obviously, uh, like I said, the nuclear... You see, it's not wired up. Right before we started filming, I didn't want anything to go wrong. In fact, uh, I'm going to get rid of that just in case and get rid of that. That we had one piece of redstone. And just before we started filming, I came in and did that. Uh, and that was it literally wired up. And then this 
is what went ahead and destroyed the server. It is a 5x5x5 five by five by five cube of nukes. Uh, so you can imagine that's why the hole was as bloody large as it was. Uh, because it was a 5x5x5 five by five by five cube of nukes. The only problem was, obviously, as you can see, this is actually a little bit of a distance. If you take a quick look at the minimap, away from the nuclear reactor. So when it did finally explode, uh, because we were wearing red matter armor, it was actually... Um, it was actually taking a little bit of time to kill us. As you can see here, nuclear reactor still under no threat of uh, melting down whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly load up, this is a backup version of the server, I'll quickly go and load up the live server because I know a lot of you have been wanting to see the scale of the devastation and what the size of the hole actually looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, so bear with me. So welcome back and here we go, that is the size of the hole if you have a look at the minimap. Um, what this is, is this is the maximum range that a nuke can destroy. No matter how many nukes, even if I'd made it a 10 by 10 by 10 cube, this hole here would only have been a little bit larger just by the fact that the nukes had been closer to the edge of the explosion. But in hindsight, what I possibly should have done is had that 25 by 25 cube of nukes and then had another cube of... Um, 25 by 25 maybe over there, another one over there, another one over there, and another one over there, just to make sure that we got the maximum destruction possible. But to be honest, I think just this hole served its purpose well enough. As you can have a look on the mini-map here, we'll drop right down into the hole. Uh, you can see it's uh, pretty damn extensive. The only thing to survive the, uh, the explosion was this minecart, which is uh, a little bit funny. So you can see as we move up, it's literally destroyed everything in the centre here. Um, nicely though, it's, it's avoided a few things. Obviously Mully's Castle survived, the brothel survived, the pyramid, Gibbs Tower and our original house even survived. As you can see, the factory uh, bore the full brunt of the explosion as did the Pantheon and WH Smiths. The farm got a bit screwed there. But as you can see, if you come around here, the, uh, the original house still pretty much intact until you go down into the basement. Once you get into the what was originally the pink room, that still survived. But if you head across into the blue food room, uh, that's now just a doorway into a giant, giant hall. So yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have blew up more of the server, thinking about it. But for the filming purposes, because it was so heavily edited and cut back and forth so quickly between the, um, the static and what you were allowed to see, served its purpose pretty well. The ladder just descends into giant giant hole so for those of you wanting to see that's what the hole looks like it's uh it's pretty damn extensive and i think it play it, it it definitely put a, a good full stop on the series there can be no doubt that uh that the series is over now what what i might do is up Lord, the unedited version of the explosion and you can see sort of a little bit more behind the curtain because about halfway through uh i had to sort of fly a bit further forward towards the explosion to make sure that i died and uh redmore had to take all of his armor off to make sure that he died as well cuddlebug actually survived she got thrown right up into the air um around about the top of the oil platform here and she just uh she just survived still got some oil in here as well which is nice And there we go, that is it. So, um, one block of obsidian. So, yeah, like I said, I might uh, at some point upload the outtakes, which will be sort of the unedited version of the explosion. You can see kind of what happened uh, before it got edited. But trust me, I think the edited version is is a hell of a lot better than um, than the unedited. So, that is going to be it for this video. You want to see the hole? There is the hole. It is absolutely enormous. Uh, pretty expansive. There's still oil in these pipes as well. It's going to flow backwards and forwards forever. So we'll just get this in the center of the mini-map. There we go. So thanks very much for watching the Tekken series, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Seemed like quite a few of you did. Hopefully you're going to watch the... It's very blue. Oh, it's the water, of course it is. Um, hopefully you're going to enjoy the Agrarian Skies series as much as you enjoyed the Tekken series. I know we're going to enjoy filming and playing it. 
And uh, I think this transitioned very, very nicely into that series. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. This has been the giant haul that you wanted to see. I have been Maxwell, and I'll catch you guys next time.